Greetings, everybody. I had an email yesterday. I received an email from a vicar. He's a rector of a church in this country who I know and like. And if you're watching, mate, I love you as a brother. And thank you for your... I know this is probably going to be hard to hear, but thank you for your ministry and thank you for your courage in recent times. But my video today... As with a lot of videos that I do or content is is a reflection and I suppose a fruit of the fact that actually there is something and someone more important to me than friends or brothers. In other words, I'm not, my priority isn't to be popular. My priority isn't to, um, for everybody to be happy. My priority is to proclaim truth even if that kills me. And that might sound melodramatic, it might sound over the top, but the reality is we are supposed to be following Jesus to the level where our lives are laid down in the ground like a seed. And without that, that there can't be any reasonable expectation for fruit or resurrection. For me to live as Christ and to die as gain, and therefore I have to speak as I feel with my hand on my heart in a prayerful posture, led to speak. I received an email yesterday from a senior leader of a of a church, and he was at the GAFCON conference in Rwanda just a week or two back. And he'd heard our podcast that Mary and I recorded yesterday or the day before. And if you've not heard it, I'd encourage you to just look for the logo as on the cup. You then have to ask the question, okay, you're talking from the Gafcon, you're talking about the plain reading of scripture. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're wanting to stand by. So questions that evidently come to mind are, what is your position on women in ministry? Mm -hmm. Because if you're talking about the plain reading of scripture, it's obvious that if you're still unified, so to speak, with sectors of your denomination that have women in places of church leadership then that is just wrong. It goes against God's teaching on eldership within the church. Women should not be leading congregations. They should not have any spiritual authority over any men. And if you are in unity with so-called churches, then that's where the hypocrisy comes in. Mm -hmm. Because basically what you're saying is that as humans as people you've decided that the same sex marriage issue mm -hmm. is more important to god than the egalitarianism one and you can kind of muddle through with that but really we've got to hold a firm line on the same sex thing mm -hmm. and i just think that is the height of arrogance mm -hmm. personally mm -hmm. i just think how can we stand before God and say, oh, we think this thing is more important and we've got to draw the line here, but we're pretty sure that God's okay with this other one here. And He'd obviously heard the podcast and I'm just going to be honest, was obviously not happy. <laughs> the email was kind of relatively curt, short, didn't have any real warmth to it. Um, and what he wanted to do was to pick me up, pick me up, correct me on all the things that I either didn't know or didn't get quite right. The minutia. So if you listen to the podcast, for example, as Mary and I are discussing, we didn't know for sure what GAFCON stood for as an acronym. Got that wrong. We didn't know for sure whether the archbishop that we were talking about, we didn't know whether he was American or Canadian, for example. We didn't know the exact sequence of order in terms of the GAFCON conferences, which, to the best of my knowledge now, I understand started in 2008. What came after? We didn't know that, and we didn't get those things. And minutia, things that are unimportant, you might say irrelevant, and so for this rector to email me, responding to the podcast that presumably he, I hope he did, listen to all of, to pick up on the minutiae of things in the context of the podcast, which, if you listen to it, you'll understand and see, is 
the glory of God, the state of his body, the church, the bride of Christ, and things relating, including people's salvation, infinitely, eternally important matters. And yet the leader wanted to email me to pick me up on things that don't nitpick. And the reason I'm doing this video today is because that in itself, for me, is an evidence that the GAFCON conference isn't sufficient, that the GAFCON call to repentance of Justin Welby and the associated Anglican congregations that go along with Welby, that this call to action that we featured in the podcast regarding the GAFCON keynote on, I think, the opening night, and again, my new show, if it's not the opening night, don't email me to, to correct me. If you want to email me to tell me that I've got something wrong that's significant, then please do, and I'll stand correct. I'll be I'll stand corrected. The caveat, as we, as in the podcast, was that we, Mary and I, didn't reasonably have any real way of listening to every single session at the keen at the conference. We listened to the opening night, and a lovely guy from from what I can tell. I'm sure he is a quality guy. He's an archbishop. I now understand, the Archbishop of the um, Anglican Church in North America. The fact that this guy had emailed me, and I consider him a friend and a brother, and I'm wanting to say that I don't think GAFCON are false. I don't think the leaders of GAFCON are false. I don't think we should be wholly um, negative about GAFCON or about the, some of the content from the recent conference. But what I'm, what I'm, what I'm here today today is, is to say that it's not sufficient, it's not adequate, it's not proportional to the situation that we are in. And my concern is, as I'm sure a lot of people listening to me would be, that we aren't generally seeing the, re, the real situation. We're not having a reality check to understand the height from which we've fallen the dishonor to the name of Jesus Christ, my priority. And so, with the greatest of respect, let's not throw Gafcon out, but the call to repentance, I want to explain now why I think it's inadequate and insufficient and why actually I do think it's hypocritical. I've stood, I stand by what we said in the podcast, which is that this is not the call to repentance that comes as a fruit of repentance when the heart is cut and you're in a place of desperation to do whatever and whenever is required. It's something else. It's something less than that. And I think there are reasons for that. Um, namely, that really we don't want to be flawed. We don't want to be undone, as Isaiah said. We don't want to be ruined. We want to have as minimal disruption as possible while still calling people to repent. It won't work. It never will. When Hezekiah and the likes of Hezekiah came to a place of genuine reformation and he emptied the temple of all filth, it's a word in Hebrew called nida, nida, and it's all filth. It's a very strong word. There are no negotiations. There are no, there's no small print. There's no, we're working on it. Be patient with us. No. When the Lord floors you at the point of salvation, you're not issuing terms and conditions. And neither should there be that attitude when it comes to the corporate level. And so as we pointed out, as one of the main reasons why this GAFCON call to repentance is not legitimate, is because the call to repentance is about one specific man or one specific issue or a, a, a bunch of clustered related issues i.e. homosexuality and other things relating, whether to do with transgenderism or polygamy. It's coming. Incest. Legitimizing things that are, in the, in the view of God, abhorrent. Pedophilia, etc. And so it's not just a question of those things being called... The, the, the call to repentance means that everything has to be dealt with. And whilst calling for the repentance of Justin Welby and his mates, there is this attitude from GAFCON that, well, we, we realise that the egalitarian issue is problematic, but be patient with us, we're working on it. It's, it's unacceptable. And it's symptomatic of the fact, 
that the the church, the Gafcon congregation, are wanting to call, I think, of the Church of England and the Anglican community globally, but also for there to be a sense in which this is the standard, this is the model. Come, call, It's time for repentance. To whom shall we go, as their conference asked? And so um, I want to just say very clearly that you can't call Justin Welby to repentance over the issue of homosexuality and related, but not deal decisively and immediately with other issues that are contrary to the word of God. It simply makes you a hypocrite. It's a, hypo it's a hypocritical call to repentance. And you can be heartfelt. You can be a heartfelt, tear-streaming hypocrite, but nonetheless be a hypocrite. And as I said in the podcast with Mary, it's one of the number one things that turns the average neighbour, the average unchurched, unsaved person away from God. It's hypocrisy. An email from, to me from a rector who was at the conference wanting me to know that because I wasn't there, I basically hadn't really got the real deal. I hadn't got the real end of the stick. Whilst then ignoring my reply which reached out for a conversation, wanted to do that publicly for the benefit of the wider church, for people like me, you listening to this. What does the rector who was at the conference have to say about the fact that egalitarianism... I'm not going into the email in detail for respect of, of this leader. And my hope, as I said to him, that the Archbishop Foley Beach and these other guys need to be humble enough to listen to a voice that isn't part of the institution, the establishment. And I would say that in all, in, in all humility to all denominations. Because I see the call to repentance as entirely transcendent over all these man-made structures. I hope you can understand that. We're not talking about the Church of England being called to repentance or to reformation. We're talking about the body of Christ. We're talking about the bride of Christ. I'll show you a clip in just a minute. My new book, The Glorious Few, is just hot off the press. You can get a copy. I'd encourage you, if you, especially if you're in the UK, to get yourself a limited edition copy, just because it's a lot better. There are features that aren't in the Amazon version. Um, and the reason I'm... You might think, who is this self-appointed guy, Nick Frank, speaking to the likes of quality guy. And again, I stress, I don't think Gafcon are false. I don't think the guys, the leaders, the guy who I consider to be a friend who I, whose email yesterday I'm referring to, um, I don't think they're false. And I don't, I just don't think they're seeing the reality of the situation that we're in. And I think that when we do, there is a prepared and a willingness to forsake all, forsake all, including the dog collar, including the establishment, including the liturgy, including the X, Y, and Z. And so when I get an email picking me up on the minutiae whilst sidestepping the main infinite eternal realities, it's a symptom, it's a fruit of the fact this isn't repentant. If he was, and if it was a repentant conference genuinely that this person had been at, there wouldn't have been the type and tone of email that I received. And there wouldn't have been an, a, a sidestepping and ignoring of my follow-up. We should be bold as lions, but that's not what I heard. Being as bold as a lion would have, would have involved Foley Beach standing up and confessing publicly the sin and the hypocrisy and the disobedience and unbelief when it comes to the word of God in all areas, not just the areas that Welby's guilty of. That's what repentance would be uh, some kind of indication of that, some kind of an awareness that there's a there's a need for everything to be on the table, everything. And it's going to cost people everything. How dare you speak to us about suffering whilst in your holy huddles together, enjoying the benefits of fellowship and community and salary and position, all the while taking a slovenly attitude to do with some of the issues that are contrary to the word of the God, whilst calling another part of the, the church to repentance. It's hypocrisy. I'd encourage you, please get this book. 
I explain it's directly relevant to this issue of GAFCON and what do I, what do we think of, of the call to repentance. It's directly relevant. This is not contrived. I've worked on this book for a year full time. And I'd encourage you to get it and read it and listen to what I'm saying. And other people who would also say yes and amen to what has been written and other people who are ministering in the same kind of context. We have nothing to lose. The Church of England, GAFCON, all the other major establishments have a lot to lose. And that's part of the issue. That's part of the problem. So please read it. You can get it on uh, Firebrand Notes. You can get your limited edition copy or an ebook if you prefer. Before I go, I want to just show you this clip in closing. Does this clip that I'm about to show you from the GAFCON conference in Rwanda last week, does it convey a solemn assembly? Foley Beach referred to being sorrowful and brokenhearted to do with Justin Welby. And does this, what I'm about to show you now, 15, 20 minutes at least on this one meeting given, does this reflect a national global call to repentance? Repentance that you can reasonably recognize from the scripture, from the Bible? Yes or no? Oh, <laughs> 